So we've been talking extensively about the Diels Alder reaction, uh, and we want to talk now about why we observe the respective regio and stereoselectivity uh, that we that we see. So let's first start with regio selectivity, and we, let's take the following example. So let's take this uh, this diene. Let's react this diene with the following dienophile. And we need to get a particular uh, product. And so when we're examining uh, the diene and the dienophile, of course, we uh, want to know whether or not this is a normal Diels Alder reaction or an inverse electron demand Diels Alder reaction. And we said in the previous lecture that this is an inverse electron demand Diels Alder because the dienophile has an electron donating group and the uh, diene has an electron withdrawing group, or two electron withdrawing groups. And so let's uh, let's circle actually the diene and, and start there. So we need to figure out which one of these two N carbon atoms, uh, this one or this one, is going to have the greatest delta positive charge, right? because this is acting as a LUMO. And so in order to do that, well, we need to draw resonance forms uh, for uh, this particular uh, structure. And so when we do that, the electrons can move out of the pi system like this, uh, or they can move out of the pi system like this, uh, to give us a new resonance form. And this new resonance form will look, uh, look like this. And so what this uh, resonance form tells us uh, is that the top carbon atom is the one that has the greater delta positive charge. Now let's take a look at the uh, dienophile. The dienophile has an electron donating group, and of course uh, we want to determine uh, which one of these two carbon atoms, here or here, uh, is going to be the most uh, delta minus, because in this, no in, in this inverse electron demand Diels Alder reaction, um, we use the dienophile as the homo. And so in order to figure that out, we again use um, the fact that there are lone pairs on nitrogen that push electron density into the ring, in, into the, uh, the, the double bond, and that's going to generate the following Lewis structure. And so what we see from this is that this carbon atom, the bottom one, is going to be more delta minus. And so, um, in general, Diels-Alder reactions proceed so that an atom with the largest coefficient in the HOMO will pair with the atom with the largest coefficient in the LUMO. And so, by, uh, by drawing these Lewis structures, by drawing these resonance forms, we can actually identify which of the atoms has the greater delta positive and greater delta negative charge. And so, what ends up happening is that um, you will then line up those two atoms in your tran transition state. So let's do that. Let's line up those two atoms and make sure that those two atoms are forming a bond. Uh, and so what we would need to do uh, is to take uh, the diene, orient it in this same way, but we would need to orient uh, the dienophile in such a way that pairs up uh, with that, um, uh, that diene. Okay, so we have uh, new bonds forming here. That's the strong bond that forms. And what we end up with is a cyclohexene product uh, that looks like this. and of course, plus the enantiomer. So when you're trying to determine regioselectivity, you just line up the most reactive atoms. So that takes care of regioselectivity. What about stereoselectivity? Why, I, why do I have uh, the methoxy, uh, the methyl ester, and the uh, NN dimethylamine um, pointing in, the, uh, in, in a dash, you know, in the, in the back orientation? Well, uh, we need to um, look at, at that, at that uh, by doing a, a reaction uh, that involves um, uh, this diene. So if we have furan, 
Uh, and we react furan with, um, let's say, this um, methyl uh, acrylic ester. Uh, we can approach that, um, that dienophile from the, the bottom face. And so we're forming that set of bonds and that set of bonds right there. Uh, but this can also orient in a different way. So it could orient in a way in which the uh, ester group is facing the opposite direction. So we can form that bond or that bond. Now these two different forms are called uh, the endo and the exo. Right, so again, this is um, a Diels-Alder stereoselectivity. In general, Diels-Alder reactions can give two products, the endo and the exo. And these form based upon the approach of the dienophile to the diene. Now, normally, it's the endo product that is, uh, that is favored. So in this particular uh, instant, the endo is favored by 4 to 1. So what really explains this endo selectivity? Well, let's, let's first draw out the products of uh, this reaction. So we're going to have a bridged by cyclic system in which we've got this oxygen atom here. There's our, our, our new double bond. And then the methyl ester part is tucked underneath um, uh, the, um, the bicycle. In the case of the exo product, uh, we again form this bridged bicycle, but this time the methyl ester is oriented uh, away. Okay. So what explains this endo uh, selectivity? Well, again, we must consult the molecular orbital uh, diagrams, right? If we consider that in a normal Diels-Alder reaction, which is uh, what this reaction is, uh, we need to uh, pair up uh, the homo of the diene with the lumo of the dienophile. So let's actually just draw that out. So let's put the, uh, the diene here. And let's draw out the homo of the diene. Recall that the homo of the diene is going to have large lobes. right? Uh, and let me just draw it in a different color. Uh, it's going to have large lobes uh, on the outsides. And then you're going to have one phase change in between uh, C2 and C3. Okay. Now if we take the case of the uh, dienophile, the dienophile is going to orient, as we said, preferred endo. So I'm forming these uh, two new bonds right here. Now the problem is that uh, this LUMO is no longer just a two-atom system. Remember that there's conjugation here. So this is now a four pi electron system. And we know that in a 4 pi electron system, it will have molecular orbitals that resemble a diene. It will have molecular orbitals that resemble 1, 3 butadiene. And so when we try to um, place onto the dienophile the LUMO, we know that the LUMO is going to come from psi 3. So what does psi 3 look like? Uh, psi 3 looks like uh, the following. So it's got, again, big lobes. On the, uh, on the ends, and we have, um, again, uh, two different nodes this time uh, to give us this, uh, this representation. Okay? And so when we have this uh, orientation, what we, can, uh, what we can see is that everything is lined up correctly. So if the dienophile is um, approaching from the bottom face, that means that the top lobe of uh, the uh, dienophile is interacting with the bottom lobe of the diene, and those are in phase. Uh, same thing happens here, right? So there's uh, net bonding uh, going on. But what is the, the origin of the endoselectivity? You could, of course, have this with uh, exo um, uh, orientation as well. Well, the origin of the endoselectivity comes from the fact that there's a, um, a property known as secondary orbital overlap.
And the secondary orbital overlap comes from the fact that uh, on that carbonyl atom, you can get an additional interaction uh, between the uh, unshaded uh, top lobe of the dienophile with the unshaded bottom lobe of C2 in the diene. And so this interaction here is your secondary orbital overlap, and that can only occur if that ester part of the diene is tucked underneath in an endo uh, conformation. Okay? And so uh, this uh, transition state uh, is, um, is this transition state here. Um, this transition state is, is of course, favored um, as opposed to the exo-transition state in which you don't have that secondary orbital overlap. And so as a, as a result of this, this, there's this extra bonding interaction with the carbonyl um, uh, and the C2 uh, carbon of the, of the diene. This interaction doesn't happen in the exo-transition state since it's pointed in the opposite direction. You would flip uh, that, uh, that diene, uh, excuse me, that dienophile uh, into the opposite direction. So th this additional bonding interaction is called secondary overlap, and what it really requires is the presence of a pi system um, uh, to, uh, to do that net bonding. If we just had a system that just had um, no uh, uh, additional uh, conjugation, instead of a 4 pi system, it was, if it was just a 2 pi system, um, then um, the exo is going to be uh, going to be favored, and the reason for this is that there's some steric uh, interactions uh, that are uh, that are happening in this transition state. So uh, if you have a um, uh, a system with in which there is additional conjugation, you're going to favor endo because of secondary orbital overlap. If you don't have conjugation um, and you just have uh, you know sterically bulky groups that's going to favor the exo uh, conformation. Okay, we uh, predict the stereoselectivity uh, of um, uh, these Diels-Alder reactions. Uh, well, we, we draw the transition states. And so let's, uh, let's do some examples. And so let's say I have the following uh, structure, um, following diene and this dienophile How could I predict uh, the product here? Well, uh, we need to orient these two in a uh, in a transition state, and so I'm going to orient this uh, this diene kind of like this, and so I'm going to rotate it a little bit out of the plane of the uh, of the page of the of the screen, um, and I'm going to orient that um, that dienophile in one of two directions. I could either orient it uh, in this direction. in which the pi bond is making, um, um, excuse me, the, the dienophile is making uh, new bonds to uh, the, the diene, um, in which the carbonyls are pointed away, or I could orient it um, in the direction in which I have those uh, two uh, carbonyls uh, pointing in the uh, other direction, uh, underneath. Like this. And it turns out that this is the correct orientation because, again, uh, this is a system which has extended conjugation. So this is no longer a four atom system, it's a six atom uh, pi system. All of those pi bonds are in conjugation with one another. So what this means is that there is secondary orbital overlap. So you know you're going to orient um, the, the dienophile in the endo uh, sense. Uh, and so endo is, is favored here. And so what we do is we can uh, start to draw some, uh, some bonds. And so let's actually, uh, let's actually do that. Um, let's draw uh, a set of bonds now in which uh, we, we're, we're making uh, the new uh, pi system, new cyclohexene ring. Um, I've got a new bond there. Uh, that's part of my cyclohexene. Uh, remember that methyl group is kind of, as you flip it out of the plane of the page, it's 
pointing away from you, and the hydrogen's pointing towards you. On the other end of the molecule, right, you've got um, uh, two hydrogens, one's pointing towards you, and one's pointing away from you. Now, the new, two new sigma bonds that are created, uh, the, um, the, the dienophile is pointing um, so that the carbonyls are tucked underneath, which means that the hydrogens on that alkene are pointing away. So here's my two hydrogens, and my, um, my pi system, my double bond uh, carbonyls, are pointing in this direction. And so I form those bonds, and I get this kind of uh, um, mangled uh, structure, kind of uh, folded structure. And what I can do is I can unfold it. All right, so what I need to do is essentially take this, um, this system here and flip it down. And so what I'm really doing is looking at this, um, uh, this structure from the bird's eye point of view. And if we were to look at this from the bird's eye point of view, we would see a structure uh, that, uh, that looks like this, in which you've got uh, a pi system on the left-hand side. It's got a methyl group, a cyclohexene. On the top carbon, I've got a methyl group that's pointing away from me. And then on the um, alternative, uh, on, on the other side, I've got my, um, my two carbonyls that are both pointing uh, away from me. It's the hydrogens that are pointing towards me. Okay, so I have this structure as my uh, as my product. Of course, I'm going to get the enantiomer, and you might be asking yourself, well, where does that enantiomer come from? Uh, well, by convention, I've said that um, I like to draw the dienophile coming from the bottom, but the dienophile could also approach from the top face. Now, I like to draw it so that the dienophile is coming from the bottom because uh, the transition state structure here. Uh, is a lot easier to draw when it approaches from the bottom. So you just have to recognize uh, that you can also get the enantiomer in this case. All right, so this is how you draw uh, the stereoselective uh, nature of uh, diels alder reactions. So let's now try to combine uh, the prediction of the regioselectivity with the prediction of the stereoselectivity. Do that with the following example. Uh, so let's say we have uh, this diene. It's got a methoxy group here uh, and a, a an OTBS group here. TBS is just a big silicon group. Okay, uh, we're going to uh, take that molecule and we're going to react it with uh, a choline. And I want to draw what the product of that uh, that structure is. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is to figure out whether or not this is a normal Diels-Alder reaction or an inverse electron demand Diels-Alder reaction. And, and you know, uh, because of the lone pairs that are on oxygen in this case, um, pushing electron density into uh, the diene, that um, these are electron donating groups. And likewise, uh, you've got resonance that can uh, move electron density out of uh, the dienophile um, to make it more uh, electropositive. And so this is um, a, an electron withdrawing group. Uh, this is a normal Diels-Alder reaction. So since it's a normal Diels-Alder reaction, again, we're going to react the HOMO of the diene with the LUMO of the dienophile. And, and so we need to figure out which one of these two carbon atoms in the, uh, in the diene uh, is the most delta minus. And so in order to, to figure that out, we need to uh, draw some resonance forms. And so uh, that set of resonance forms puts delta minus on that carbon. This set of resonance forms put delta minus on this carbon. So what this is telling you uh, is that that carbon atom right there, compared to this carbon atom, that carbon, that N carbon, is going to be the most delta minus. Okay, So it's going to have a slightly larger lobe uh, than the other end carbon uh, in side 2. Now we have to decide which one of these two carbon atoms is going to be more delta plus in the dienophile. And so for that, of course, we can draw resonance forms. 
uh, we can move electron density up onto oxygen, and that's going to create more delta uh, positive charge uh, on this end carbon. And so again, that carbon is going to be more delta plus. Okay, so now we can take those two and we can orient them in a transition state. All right, so we're going to slightly tilt this um, this dienophile, this this diene, um, out of the plane of the page. And so I've got this methoxy group kind of pointing towards me a little bit, and that hydrogen kind of pointing away from me. Remember, those are not in the plane of the page. They're pointing uh, out towards you and um, back away from you. Okay. Um, and then we have um, uh, this carbon atom that we want to pair up uh, with the uh, delta, more delta plus carbon of the dienophile. And so in order to do that, what I like to do is just draw it uh, coming from the bottom face. I like to circle the fact that um, that back carbon is the one that's going to make the bond right here uh, to, the, um, uh, to the diene. And so I know that that carbon is, uh, is, is this one, of course. But now I need to figure out, okay, which side am I going to draw the acrolein or the aldehyde? Am I going to draw the aldehyde this direction? Or am I going to draw the aldehyde in, in this direction? And uh, for that, that's a stereoselectivity issue. And so we need to uh, think about whether or not... Um, uh, there's the potential for secondary orbital overlap here, and indeed there is, right? We have a four pi electron system, and so you can get secondary orbital overlap between this carbon uh, and that carbon if you were to draw those, uh, those frontier molecular orbitals, those homo of the diene and lumo of the dienophile. Right, so endo is favored. And so we can start to draw uh, out our um, uh, our four mem uh, six membered ring, and so we have that set of uh, uh, electrons moving. Uh, we can draw our folded structure. Our folded structure is going to look like um, kind of like a boat. All right. So here's my new cyclohexene. I've got a TBS group, OTBS group here. All right. I've got a hydrogen coming out towards me and a hydrogen going back away from me on that top carbon. All right. Um, on that bottom carbon, I'm going to draw in a methoxy group coming out towards me here and a hydrogen coming back away from me here. And notice I'm drawing those at the, uh, at the top of that, um, of that carbon instead of down here at the bottom. Uh, and that's because your, uh, your um, uh, carbons are, are actually pointing in the direction in which you should draw that. Okay, so always draw it towards the, towards the top. So that methoxy group is, is pointing towards you. Um, on, the, uh, on the edge, on the other edge, uh, we have two hydrogens, of course, pointing in this direction and in this direction. Those are the exo. And then the endo are another hydrogen here and then another um, aldehyde here. All right, so there's my um, folded structure. I need to unfold this in order to create a structure that looks like a line angle structure. So again, I'm going to uh, take this carbon and kind of flip it down, right, so it doesn't look like a, a boat structure anymore. It kind of looks like a um, six-membered cyclohexane ring. And so I'm going to look at this uh, species from the top face, and when I do that, uh, I'm going to have uh, a, a cyclohexene that has an OTBS group on the left-hand side, that methoxy group, as you look at it from the bottom, from the top face, is going to be pointing away from you as you flip that carbon down. And likewise, the aldehyde is also pointing away from you. And so we get that, uh, that deals alder product. That's a uh, regioselective reaction because we've paired up uh, the most delta minus with the most delta plus carbon in the HOMO uh, and the LUMO. And we favor the endo um, uh, transition state. Of course, you get the enantiomer here, but this is the product that you get. All right, let's do one more example. This example would 
be the following. So let's let's take um, that diene and let's react that diene with uh, this dienophile. And so we want to draw the product of this reaction. Um, and so um, first thing we do is we try to figure out whether or not this is a normal Diels-Alder reaction or an inverse electron demand Diels-Alder reaction. And what we see is that um, it's not quite uh, clear. Uh, we have electron donating groups, uh, alkyl groups, that can sigma donate in both cases, in the diene and the dienophile. So what this really means is that um, you can't really, can't really classify these as um, normal or inverse, so you're going to require a lot higher temperatures and pressures. But nevertheless, we can uh, try to uh, uh, figure out what this molecule might, uh, might look like if it does undergo uh, a 4 plus 2 cycloaddition. Um, so uh, first thing we need to do is figure out regioselectivity. Now, you might say, okay, this methyl group is sigma donating. That's going to push electron density towards uh, this carbon. And this one's sigma donating, pushing electron density towards this carbon. Uh, and so this is the carbon of the two N carbons. That's the more delta minus. But when we look at the dienophile, we notice that the dienophile is completely symmetrical. So it actually doesn't really matter. We don't have any regio uh, chemical issues that we need to worry about here. And so let's just draw the, uh, the transition state. Transition state is going to look like this. Let's tilt that. Uh, that diene out of the plane of the uh, page a little bit, right? So this meth methyl group right here is kind of going back away from you, and the hydrogen uh, right there is coming towards you. That'll, that'll be important in a second. Uh, and then we have the, uh, the dienophile, which is approaching from uh, the bottom face. Now here's our two bonds that are forming. Now we have a question of whether or not we need to orient that dienophile endo or exo. And we uh, might um, uh, take a look at whether or not this particular molecule is, uh, has got extended conjugation. And what you'll notice is that it doesn't have extended conjugation. It's just methyl groups. And so since it doesn't have additional conjugation, it's really only a 2 pi electron system. And so since it's a 2 pi electron system, it would require more energy to orient those methyl groups endo because of steric reasons. And so what you'd rather do is uh, orient those groups exo to avoid that steric clash. All right, so in this case, um, we don't have any secondary orbital overlap possible because there's no pi system to do that secondary orbital overlap. And so exo is now favored because of steric reasons. And so we can form those new bonds. So we can uh, form these bonds in this uh, 4 plus 2 cycloaddition. And then we can uh, draw what the resultant uh, product would look like. Uh, again, we've got this kind of folded um, boat-like structure. On that top carbon, remember that methyl group is going to be pointing away from us. Hydrogen's pointing towards us, right? On the bottom carbon, um, we've got a hydrogen pointing towards us and a hydrogen pointing away from us. On the sides, uh, we have two methyl groups that are placed in uh, exo. It's the two hydrogens that are uh, facing underneath uh, the pi system. And so again, we can unfold this molecule. We bring this down. What was a wedge is going to become a dash. What was a dash is going to become a wedge. Um, and then we're looking at this molecule from the bird's eye point of view. Uh, and what you can then see is that uh, the product of this reaction uh, is going to look like a methyl group is sitting back away from us here. And then two methyl groups are pointing towards us here. Okay. Notice that um, this particular um, molecule, this particular uh, reaction, is stereospecific, right? We have uh, a dienophile, which is uh, which is syn, and so any stereochemical information you have in this molecule is propagated through to the product. Uh, we have um, a syn orientation of those two methyl groups in the product as well. 
This time the exo product is favored because there's no possibility for secondary orbital overlap. So the steric considerations dominate the transition state and you get the, the, the product uh, shown. Again, we have the enantiomer, where you could orient uh, the dienophile approaching from the top face instead of the bottom face, uh, but you get this particular uh, uh, um, diastereomer.